Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wassalam ala Sayyidin Anbiya wal Mursaleen. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima tu'allimuna wa zidna bi fadlik ilman wa ta'aliman. Innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Ahlan wa sahlan everybody. Welcome to the first uh, class. So we are reading from uh, Kitab Zuhud, uh, which is called Softening of the Heart. Kitab Zuhud wa Raqa'iq by great Imam Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. Um, so we'll just um, mention briefly about what the book is about. Uh, the book is a collection of a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, words of the Salaf, of the early Muslims, concerning what it means to be a believer at heart. Right? Zuhud is a gen generic term used by the early Muslims for an attachment to this life and attachment to the akhirah and all the various different uh, um, uh, ways of being and, way, and modes of being that stem from that. Um, so everybody has the book. Uh, Alina Firdaus, Ayat, you will have the book. Um, my book will be coming soon. Uh, Okay, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so the book, the first 30 pages talk about some various different things. What is the hood and various issues there? Uh, uh, which one are, without which going to get jumped into the book, which want to talk about some books written on the hood. So this topic is a topic that you find in hadith books. So in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim Tirmidhi, you have a chapter on these kind of things, right? We saw some of these things at the end of the, uh, uh, of in the Muatta, these are chapters of books, right? But these are certain books dedicated solely to this thing. Okay, so it says here, uh, certain books written on this thing. He says, da, 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 da. And he mentions number one, this book. Kitab al-Zuhud of Imam Sheikh al-Islam Abdullah ibn Mubarak al-Marwazi. So he's Marwazi, he's from Central Asia, from Turkmenistan. And so when is he born? In 118, just very early. So he's born in the time, he's of the Tabi'een or the Tabi Tabi'een. Right, so, you know, he's of that very, very early stage, right? It is the oldest extant book on the theme of Zuhud. Okay, so this is the, one of the oldest books that exist, the book that's in front of us right now. Right, so it's written by the time of the time of the Tabi'in or the Tabi'in. Tabi then we have other books on it, Kitab al-Zuhud of Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah, right, which is one of the teachers of Imam al-Shafi'i. So Imam al-Shafi'i, uh, uh, he studied with, uh, with Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah, one of his teachers in Kufa. Uh, the Kitab al-Zuhud by al-Hafid Asad ibn Musa, uh, similarly, Kitab al Zuhud of Imam Ahmad himself, so the great Imam Ahmad. Um, it says here, it is a collection of 2,000 narrations, some of which are not related from Ahmad but have been added by his son Abdullah. Earlier scholars' comments on the book indicate that the current published edition seems only to be a portion of his actual book, and his book is, is organized quite differently to this book, it has lots of things from the previous prophets. So the Zuhud of Sayyidina Sulaiman, the Zuhud of Sayyidina Isa, the Zuhud, how do they view these kind of things? Um, the Zuhud of Hanad, who was one of the students of Waqiyya. The Zuhud of uh, Abu Dawood. Um, the Zuhud of Ibn Abi Asim. And what we call a Zuhud al-Kabir, which is one of a late book in the 5th century by Imam al-Bayhaqi. And so eventually what happened was this genre of literature that talks about not valuing the world and caring about the akhirah, that talks about humility, that talks about not showing off, that talks about caring for others, that talks about how you should live your life, eventually turned into a science that we call tasawwuf. Right? Tasawwuf. So we have to understand that every single Islamic science is, evolves over time. Some they, they some you know in different ways. Uh, so for example, usul al-fiqh. There's fiqh, and then that specializes into different things, right? 
um, and so uh, uh, kalam uh, is an, another or aqida is another science of so these various different sciences so the science of ihsan is are these books right these things here and eventually comes becomes uh, into the science of tasawwuf which is going to be a combination of hadith and sayings of the early muslims about how to be and then we have a few key works in that science such as the risala of qushayriya right and then later imam ghazali's ihya al numadin and then everybody kind of just uses the ihya al numadin in various different ways okay um and so this is what we can call it the uh, the, the tasawwuf of the salaf Right, the Sufism of the, the of the of the of the of the Salaf, how they how they used to use these things. Okay, then you can read about the author himself. He's an amazing, great scholar. But uh, um, just we need to know where he is in time. Right, he's of the Tabi'in or the Tabi Tabi'in. So um, he's going to be one of the you know the uh, uh, kind of the teachers of the teachers of the authors of the six books. That's kind of like where he is in time. Okay, so you can read his biography, uh, what he did, how he lived his life. It's important that he was not somebody who just sat at home and did nothing. He was a mujahid and he was a tradesman. He did all sorts of things. Um, and so uh, being detached from the dunya doesn't mean that you don't know anything. It's also important that he's from Merv, right? And so uh, uh, Alina and Fidosh, you might remember Merv, Maru, which was in Central Asia in what place called Turkmenistan. <laughs> which was the biggest city on the face of the earth for 100 years. So perhaps in his time or slightly afterwards, it was a very, very, very significant bustling city. That's where he's from originally. And that's in modern day Turkmenistan. Sorry, my cat. Every single time I teach, he wants to be like in the center of the uh, thing. So he's trying to get onto the computers of my body. Okay, so without more ado, we're going to start with the book itself. <clears throat> um, so softening the heart that's the translation kitab az zuhud wa raqaiq zuhud meaning unattached unattachment to other than Allah and raqaiq that which makes your heart your heart raqiq that which makes your heart soft okay um, so just quick question guys um, uh, Ayat are you are you in the Bay Area? I am I live in Oakley okay you live in Oakley okay great um, because I'll just quick, I mean, in, usually we try and keep the classes to one particular time, but as Maghrib is coming in, and I think in approximately five minutes. So is it okay if we maybe we given that we're all in the same area that we all stop to pray Maghrib and then come back? Is that is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine, inshallah. Okay, great. Inshallah. Okay, so so it says on page 56. Uh, encouragement to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then mentions his chain of transmissions. We have to understand books don't come out of nowhere. Books come out of a chain of transmission. So, so he's going to mention chain of transmission back to Abdullah Mubarak. And he's got, some people, sometimes they're going to mention places and times. So if you look at the chain of transmission here, so we're going to find a manuscript, right? If you saw a critical edition of this, you see a manuscript and the manuscript will have a chain of transmission going back to so-and-so, to so-and-so, to so-and-so. And it says, from Abu Muhammad, Yahya ibn Muhammad ibn Sa'd, on Thursday, the 24th of Rabi al Awwal in the year 305, at the door of his house, that Hussein ibn Hassan al Marawazi narrated on in the year, uh, related in the year 240, uh, uh, 240, uh, 245, that Abdullah Mubarak said. Right? So we'll, we'll often see things like that, right? That with a chain transmission particularly in the later period, in the third and or sorry, third and fourth and fifth centuries, you're going to have more specific details of exactly where and when and how this was narrated, right? Um, you'll often you'll often have that. Um, what is it? Um, there's a certain book that it said, you know, I transcribed this book from the teacher who taught on Monday and Thursday mornings from the from this month to this month in the years such and such and such and such. Like, so you know exactly who, who, who it is, what's going on, etc. Anyway, so then he says that the Prophet وسلم, said, so question, this book is dealing with a hadith. Do you think every single hadith that we quote the Prophet وسلم, on, do you think it's going to be sahih? So the first hadith is going to be here in Sahih Bukhari, so it's going to be sahih. 
But do you think every single hadith we read is going to be a sahih? No. No. Right. Why do you not think it's the case? Because, um, for those you want to say. Uh, say it again, Linda. Um, because sometimes there is a gap in the chain. Okay, so why would he quote a hadith that is not sahih? Um, because sometimes it's true. Okay, so all, so the whole content of this book is true, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so that's one reason. The other reason is that the general approach of the salaf, okay, be it in a book like this, so this is an example of it, is that when they're talking about uh, uh, talking about like imani stuff, like to do with akhlaq and being nice and zuhud and all this kind of stuff, this kind of topic, they don't really care about the hadith being sahih. Right? So Imam Ahmad, he said, you know, when it comes to halal haram, we're strict with uh, with our chains of transmission. Like who's narrating this hadith? Who's it by? Da, 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 right? We're interested in finding out who. what is it. But when it comes to Zuhud and Raqa'iq, these kind of Imani stuff, we kind of chill. Like, I don't really care. It's not a big deal. And so it's a general approach of the scholars throughout, not just these six books, but like, I don't know how many, you could list like a thousand books, right, that talk about Imani things. And you see, oh, they mention weak hadiths. Oh, they make a mention weak hadiths. And they do it again and again and again. It's like a standard theme that when they're dealing with this kind of content, I'm not talking about halal haram. I'm not talking about aqidah. They'll 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 do that, okay. On top of the fact, half of the quotes aren't even from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam anyway, okay. So it's important methodology, right? Uh, same thing in the seerah. If you remember Alina and uh, Firdaus, right? Half of the seerah we said, or even more, was weak. Okay, why did they do that? Why do you, well, why would you quote that in the seerah? Because it helps. It's useful. Might be right, and it helps us understand things. We're not going to use it for halal haram. Right. So if you remember um, Alina and Firdaus, Imam Ahmad was asked about uh, Ibn Ishaq, who was one of the key authors of the seerah. And he said, oh, if you're talking about seerah stuff, go ahead. We don't want halal haram. We want somebody really good. Meaning, if you're talking about halal haram, I want a sahih hadith. If you're talking about like stories of how many people died at Badr and what a miracle happened, fine. Go ahead and just quote Ibn Ishaq. He's, he's good enough. He's good enough for that kind of stuff. So we have to understand that the ulama, depending on what they want to do with that information, they will change the standards of what they demand. Right. So uh, you know, another example or another kind of demonstrate that is for a hadith, for we'll accept anything that's sahih. But for Quran, we don't just accept sahih. It has to be mutawat. It has to be way above that. Right, and so in reality, these 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 levels, sahih and da'if and duet, these are really like conditions that we put in place depending on what we want to do with this. So there is nothing in this book that will change halal from to halal to haram. There's nothing in this book which will add a new point of aqidah that you didn't know before. So therefore, it's not an issue. Right, it's not an issue. And on top of that. The only danger is quoting the Prophet Sallallahu and making a lie about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we avoid that by saying, look, Ibn Abbas narrated that he said that. I didn't say that he said that. Right. And so the, the only other problem with narrating a weak hadith is you're saying, you're putting words in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mouth, even though he might not have said those words, right? It should be dangerous. But I'm not saying that. I'm saying Abu Hurairah said that. Or Ibn Abbas said that. And here's my chain. Right. And as the ulama is saying, man asnada ilayk, Whoever gives you their sources, they've, put, they've made you responsible. They're no longer responsible. So I say, in this book, it says that the Prophet said that. I'm not saying that he said that. On Yom Al-Qiyamah, I don't have to answer to Allah, why did you say the Prophet said those words? I didn't say the Prophet said those words. He said that he said those words. You can go and ask him. Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe he didn't, etc. Okay? So the key methodological idea that in modern times is challenged a lot. Right? I remember teaching in the masjid once and, and I quoted a hadith and someone says, is that hadith sahih? And I said, no. And the guy walked out. Like, what are you doing? Right? He was very much upset because he's been sold a methodology, which is weak hadiths have no place in Islam, which is not even true. Right? It's not just, oh, one book that I'm teaching right now has weak hadiths. Like Imam Ahmad, 
in his Kitab al Zuhud, tons of weak hadiths, probably like 90% weak hadiths. So why would he even do that? Or Imam Bukhari, Imam Bukhari in Sahih Muslim, he has one condition. In his Kitab, has another book, has totally different conditions. He'll, weak, he'll quote weak hadiths as well. I mean, why are you quoting weak hadiths? Because they're useful. Simple as that. Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Nasa'i, uh, half, the, half the book is weak hadiths. Why do they quote weak hadiths? Because they're useful. Right? Seerah, 50%, 60%, 70% of it is weak. Don't worry about it. It's useful. Right? So the idea that weak hadiths are wrong, that's not true. A weak hadith is, I don't really, not really sure. There's question marks around it. That's all. All right, and so for now we should we this book is this is not a hadith class and that we're looking at Sahih and Hassan and I'm not going to do any of that at all. Not 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 our focus whatsoever. In fact, the narrator's cut even the chains out. So the chains that might be in the book, he's cut, she's cut that out. It's not useful, right? So we should just focus on what are the ideas, right? What is the message that's coming towards us? And if you want to double check, did the Prophet really say that? You can look it up, and some of these things will be, you know. You'll see it's Sahih, some of it isn't. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Everyone clear with that methodology? Yeah. Uh, Hanifa? Great. So uh, I, I think, again, we're all in this area. Is it okay if we just stop to pray? Is it, is it Maghrib already now? Yeah, it is. Okay, so can we just do 10 minutes, inshallah? I'll come back in 10 minutes, and then we can yes. finish at 10 past the hour, inshallah. Mm -hmm. inshallah.